just a disclaimer, this is going to be a, a solo talk show where I'm going to talk 90% of the time. If you're not interested, you can just click off the video. And if not, if you if you like what I have to say, then you can continue watching on. And yeah, I hope you guys smash the like button. We'll come back to another episode of the Backholder Pod. So I think um there is this very interesting tweet recently by Chamaf, who's one of the hosts on um the All In podcast. I believe for many of you who actually do follow investing related content, um, you are probably aware of the podcast and they have a huge following. So recently he just tweeted about some discussion points and some of his opinions and perspective around China's economy. So before we actually go through the discussions and, and stuff, um, I'll just pass the time over to Bunti. He will walk us through what Chamaf said and uh, maybe set the stage for the entire discussion. Can, can, can. Okay. Uh, all right. So this is the tweet by Chama. Uh, let me just like quickly go through the the key pointers, and then we will discuss uh some of the pointers here below. So basically, his first line, right? He's uh he's saying China economy seems to be in big trouble. Sluggish uh consumer demand because of COVID lockdown, broken property markets with massive oversupply, fewer export in parts because of the active reshoring efforts. Reshoring meaning that all these manufacturing will be you know like um set up factories in in other countries, for example, like in India instead of like continue to expand in China. Then there's uh, large youth uh, unemployment. Uh, he's quoting a number 21%. I don't know where this number's from. Maybe Chicken later can comment in more details. And then uh, massive local government debt, shrinking populations. So he go and go like go on to like discuss in, in more details like why why he's thinking that uh, China is in uh, uh, uninvestable. Uh, so these are all the full details here. La. I, I won't go through the full details. As you can see, you can just pause and, and read if you like. So I think my, my first question to Chicken is more like, you know, um, I, I try to like um, understand like what, what is the thesis behind investing in China, for example, companies like Alibaba or Tencent, right? I think it, can, it won't go away from talking about the economies because imagine that let's say China economies is like Japan economies, right? I, I think people will be a lot more bearish, but because it is like a high growth economy, it's a huge economy, uh, hence people are thinking that, okay, they should actually put some money in, in China. So that, that's something that I would say, uh, is it like a good way to invest by just looking at the economies? Lah? I think that that should be the first question and then later we can discuss in, in uh, the other pointers here. So I'll, I'll stop the sharing first. I think... Just a disclosure uh, or like uh, just, just to hedge or to set the context or stage of the entire discussion, right? Um, whatever I'm sharing is, of course, via second or third party sources. Um, I'm not part of the CCP. I don't have a membership with them, so I don't speak for them as well. Um, but yes, I do have a very bullish stance or bullish lens when I look at China and China Chinese and the entire economy and stuff like that. So um, let's get the ground rolling and and, and we... We, we, we go back to answer our first question. So when we look at investing, it, it's quite interesting. You just said about Japan, right? But Japan just broke their, 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 their all-time highs, I think, recently. After a 30-year loss decade, um, despite the GDP, I think, going sideways for the last 20, 30 years, um, the stock market evidently didn't care. After they heard Buffett bought into a Japanese trading house, everybody just started crowding into the Japanese trade and they all went to the moon. Um, I think Buffett profited quite heavily from some of these names. I think 50, 100% because he bought in quite early. So, so that's the first part. Um, the economy and the stock market, you can say that there might be some links because at the end of the day, a lot of the companies are operating in those economies, but um, it's not very it's not very telling in that way. You, you can't really equate or oh, stock market equals to economy. So that's the first thing on the square away. I think on the second thing about Chinese economy specifically, um, let's not forget, they are the biggest, if not one of the biggest economy. Um, it's postulated to take over um, US. Of course, we can talk about the charts that, that Chamath actually put forward and say that maybe they are not on track. But at least for now, they're still the second largest. Um, at such a large economy scale, when there's one point plus billion people, let's not also forget that US is like one quarter or one fifth of the population. Um, there are many actors in the entire machine. So it's very complicated. It's not homogeneous saying that, oh, this is how the Chinese consumers thinks today. Maybe some parts are a lot more bullish than the other, while some, some GDP per capita, if you compare between the different tier cities, it's also vastly different. So that's why you can't really just group everything and say that, okay, this is how China is performing today. I think, I think it's a lot more nuanced than that. So that's the second point. I think on the third point about this whole company, we, we then we dive deeper right? after we look at the economy, then we go into the company specific. 
Um, different companies also have different profile, right? They have different debt profiles, they have different ROIC, different ROE, blah, blah, blah. So some companies are much more well-managed than the others, just like the US economy or any economies of that sort. So when, when we really want to do that analysis, right, we cannot jump everything, conflict everything together. Oh, our economy is this, then company is this, then oh, all Chinese companies, because it's under CCB, that's why it's like that. You, you get what I mean? So there is a lot of distinctions that we have to go into. So, okay, that's just the general pointers that I want to put. Now we go specific and answer your question on a few things. So Chamath actually made a few claims. Um, you did ask about uh, uh, unemployment. We, 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 we go pointer by pointer. Lah. So firstly, I think in terms of the sluggish consumer demand, it's no... It's not a foreign concept. I think they just came up from lockdown from last year after the party congress they released. But I think in the grander scheme of things, if you're to look into China, how they have positioned themselves, um, they haven't been very open to, to, to people or haven't been very open to revitalizing the economy. I'll give you an example. So I think for Singaporeans that want to go into China today, they haven't resumed the visa-free arrangement. Um, I think before, just I think a few days ago, then they allow for WeChat and Alipay to register your, your visa or MasterCard onto that. If not, I think when I have friends that go into China um, I, a few weeks back or I think two months ago, it was incredibly tough to even get a mobile number. Like you need a local to register a mobile number for you. So I think in the current context, yes, you look, look in the news headline, oh yeah, China is opening up. Why is the consumer demand or sentiment still very bad? Uh, but in actual fact, in the realities on the ground, I don't think they have fully, fully opened up. Even at least not from Singapore's perspective, we, we, we can't go in so easily. You still need to apply visa now and the entire process is very tedious. So what is the and ultimate playbook? I don't know, but I'm just stating it for a fact that they are not really fully opening up yet and consumer demand still remains heavy-handed. That's, yeah. that's a fact. So the question is, is that a good thing or not? Because I think that when it comes to China, probably it's also because all this um, like data isn't as uh, public or isn't as standard like, like people are not used to the numbers right that's why i i, I feel that uh people who pay attention to china are usually paying attention to the narrative uh and what's the story right and, and still remember let's say like uh the last quarter last year all this talk about like opening up so people are bullish uh share price all going up i wanted to uh, ask you though the narrative and the story is who create one the chinese themselves I mean, just, or is it just, wall street just, that created them I, I don't know it's just like the stories that they hear people say you can say it's wall street you can say it's just uh random people on, on twitter doesn't really matter that the thing is there's some stories to it when let's say when the share price went up like people think that okay now uh with the reopening the economy will become a lot better those are the positive trend right but it seems that all these are not playing out so is that Completely. that is, is that means that whoever that is betting on this uh reopening should, should probably like scale down the optimism when it comes to viewing uh, uh China stock market. I think quite interesting. I completely agree with what you say, but um for speculators and traders, I do agree. But it's a long term. So let's say you are betting really on the long term. You you want to invest in the stock market, like let's say you are really an investor, right? You probably need to be an to be an optimist, right? Everything looks doom and gloom when everything is down the gutter. 98 financial crisis, Singapore cannot make it. How many people took their lives? They were over leveraged in property. 2000 dot-com bubble, 2008, 2020. It's the same thing over and over and over again. So to, to me, you ask me this question. Um, I can tell you that of course it looks bad. Everything looks bad when it's down the hill. Meta looks bad when they reinvest into Metaverse. Amazon looks bad when it's reinvesting into their cycle. You look at any metric, it all looks bad. So then you ask me this question. I don't have an answer, but I only can tell you I'm I'm still long-term extremely bullish on the prospects and how they will recover. Um, in the short term, everything look, looks crazy. Uh, I think another 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 example I can off the top of my head, I don't know whether you still remember. I think you guys are, are 10 over years old during the 97 when Hong Kong needed to return to China. Everybody was running away from Hong Kong. Wow, this is the end. After under Britain's colony, I think 1 million people immigrated out of Hong Kong out of a 6-7 million population. And then Hong Kong still became the four Asian tigers. Um, it, it's still behind Singapore, of course. Singapore is a different beast. But if you look at how they compare to South Korea uh, or Japan, um, just strip away the last four years, because the last four years was, was plagued by COVID, right? I think in the last two decades, they've done relatively well. I mean, if you're optimistic about Hong Kong, I think there's a lot of opportunity. If you're op optimistic about China in the long term, there's also a lot of opportunity. I'm not, I'm country agnostic. 
Um, and I remain a long term optimist. I hope I answer your question. If but long term optimist also is not like just general, like like big umbrella cover everything. Like right? it should be more specific. Like long term optimist on what is it on the economies on the populations on the you know the the class that is like become more and more wealthy in in China. Uh, optimist on their policy is getting in to be more capitalism and, and become like like US. Uh, bigger than US. What what what's actually, the specific things actually, to look at actually? Actually, the funny thing is, you see, uh, here when you when you when you mention those different factors, right? You are establishing like a dichotomy, meaning there's a right or wrong. Means being no, more no, capitalistic. No, there's no right and wrong. It's just like what what are the op- what are you optimist about? Okay. Like what are the so, spe- specifics, right? Okay, so I think generally, I do believe that the consumers are gonna get richer and richer. That's that's a, a fact for the last twenty years. Um, I of course you look at Chama's recent tweet. He was showing that uh China's economy in a very downside or down downside plus financial crisis, it will actually contract for the following foreseeable thirty years. Um, I don't think that's gonna be the case. Even if it's gonna contract or if the property bubble is gonna implode on itself, it's gonna be a short term five years maximum. They will iron themselves out. I do believe that every country will find a way to kind of uh, 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 get themselves out of all this nonsense and we are, we are just in a cycle and we are part of a cycle um, now that we are in a down cycle. That's number one. Number two, um, of course, it's your general traditional narrative, right? Uh, Chinese consumers getting richer, everybody moving up the value chain. Um, you, have, you see more and more Chinese universities climbing up the ranks. They're pumping up more and more STEM graduates. Um, there are there they are more equipped in uh in terms of skill sets and and transitioning towards whatever like your AI your tech, um it's a tricky situation. The economy don't really demand for it for now, um but I do believe that they can transition over. It's basically also like Singapore from textile manufacturing. Last time we were making clothes, now we are the banking hub in Asia. You're just optimistic about many of these factors that that would boost uh, many of the company's bottom line and how the consumers will spend money. I mean that's a that's a that's a given assumption if you are even remotely interested in having China exposure. That that's just uh, you can go through point by point. I can talk to you about it, but uh that it's too long. Um, I don't know how much time you have, but I I just wanted to see if Kelvin has any questions also. Uh no questions. <laughs> I'm 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 actually I feel like Chama he's on the a bit biased on the US side. La. So okay, so on the first point, uh he said that there was there's sluggish consumer demand because of COVID lockdowns. I think consumer demand has like recovered, sort of recovered in China, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> but it's also because of this whole COVID lockdown thing. Uh, US didn't do this COVID lockdown because their political system was messed up. Like people actually politicize uh, political. They they make politics out of wearing a mask la. So if you are wearing a mask you are basically a Democrat, you don't wear a mask, you are a Republican. So, but for China, they don't po- try to politicize this thing, right? I think for them, the government is more about trying not to get people dying. <laughs> so so that even until right now, it's, it's still under COVID or that because they have not produced enough whatever healthcare thing to meet this COVID thing. Nah. Then the second thing, broken property market. US also has their own like oversupply in the property market, right? Uh, so in essence, there's like not much difference in that. Uh, fewer exports in part. This one I have no idea. Large youth unemployment, twenty one percent. I just checked the youth unemployment rate for youth. They are measuring are up to twenty four years old. Graduates in China graduate around twenty three years old. So I, I don't know that that two years that two twenty three twenty four. Uh, unemployment rate, uh, yet 23, 24 years old, their unemployment rate grow, I feel like it, it's not a, that big of a factor compared, compared to the entire unemployment rate of China, la, which is just like 4.8%. Okay, la, it's high, la, but it's not as bad as what you may think. La. 21% is a big number, but it's not as high as just 4.82 overall unemployment rate. Uh, just so you know, uh, Singapore unemployment rate, unemployment rate for youth is about 7%. Uh, so probably because of NS, I guess. I I think also for there there is so I think we had a discussion with YCX, who's one of Bunti's members as well. There was this whole entire Twitter thread around this whole how they how they calculate the youth unemployment rate. But it's quite ironic that when you look at an entire economy and then you focus on this very interesting group of sixteen to twenty four years old for whatever reason that Chomaf has, 
Um, it it's also deeply politicized in Twitter. While everybody's saying that it's very high, very high, but like what Kelvin said or suggested, the overall youth, the overall unemployment rate in, in China is still relatively okay. Um, then of course people say that oh, how can you believe Chinese numbers? Um, for people that have this kind of concerns, uh, unless you can produce a better alternative that tells me that this your number is more closer to the truth. Um, if not, this is the only numbers that we have on our hands. Uh, I, I think on the point on the fewer exports in part of active reshoring efforts, um, they are basically just saying that many MNCs, like your Apple, your Tesla, they're trying to diversify their chain, their, their, their supply chain because COVID was a pretty, a pretty big nightmare for them. So they're moving over to India, Vietnam, whatever. Um, I think this is generally normal for companies to want to look towards diversifying. And I think for China's case, they are getting more and more expensive as well. It's a it's a transition. It's normal. It's from British and then they went to US. Then US don't, no longer do the dirty job. They throw away to China. Now China getting more and more expensive also they throw out to the rest of the other developing nations. So now, I think the bigger concern or the, the, the real factor that you should be looking at is how quick or how effective they are in transitioning up, like up the value chain. Meaning, can they start creating IPs? Can they start creating global brands that people spend money on? Can they resuscitate um, consumer sentiments and get people to spend money? That, that are more critical factors rather than saying that, oh, uh, youth unemployment is very high, uh, 16 to 25. I don't know what, 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 what can they achieve at that age. Um, there's active reshoring efforts, but um, Apple still relies heavily on the, the manufacturing, the demand. Tesla also, many of the MNCs are, are, are relying on China. Uh, I, I honestly don't see the argument. Um, exactly. Yeah. But, but, but my question is more like you say, okay, they are going to go up market, right? Like really all this IP, but are they, are they evidence that shows that there are clear breakthrough or clear improvement in this area? I'm not talking about like things that has already happened. Of course, if you compare China 10 years, 10 years ago versus now, of course, they are a lot better uh, and in all kinds of metrics you can bring up, right? It's more to say that, okay, given what is being priced in today, looking at the market today, China today, and how much should we expect uh, over the next five years, 10 years? I, I know this is when we talk about like long five, 10 years, it's very hard to come up with estimate or, or projection, but are there any things that is already happening which people don't talk about often, but we can see that those improvement is happening because uh, I still struggle to, to find this kind of uh, data points to, to like give me a, a better clarity that actually they have been doing well. Uh, they're doing very, very good. Uh, but no, nobody see it's, it's just that not not uh, it doesn't appear on uh, my Twitter feed that's, that's why I don't know so so I think all this is there any points I think that's that's my that's my okay uh, question let's, let's I think I will cover the companies that I that I follow lah, because there's there's no point no I, 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 I don't stay there but I can look at the companies that that are doing whatever they are doing so simply put let's first talk about the digital payment ecosystem. So that's one, that's one very strong point. I think even the US, um, they've been struggling to do it. We are still all relying on Visa MasterCard for the rest of the world. Um, Singapore is transitioning, but we are still taking quite a lot of efforts. So first things first, when we look at Amazon, they, they have this store, right, where there is no people that man, man the store because they want to use AI and re facial recognition, your payment wallets and whatever. I think they launched it, I've forgotten in which year. As an Amazon shareholder, you probably would be a lot uh, clearer on that. China has already made that kind of improvements, uh, uh, 24 hours delivery and whatever, right? Using your palm or using facial recognition to pay. You don't even need to take out your, your, your phone or whatever. Those are digital improvements that expedience or, or improve convenience. Um, I think these, they you, you don't even need to search much. You just go into Alibaba's own YouTube channel. They show you how the entire process is speed up. So, so that's one part. In terms of digital innovation and how they are improving the entire lives of people and improve convenience, this is increase in productivity. I think that's just my, my, my personal take on how I, I look at it. I think the second part, when you look at uh, many of these leaps in terms of like autonomous driving and whatever nonsense, right? We, 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 we say that now US has been restricting heavily. They don't send AI chips. They are banning. They are, they're calling people back from China, go back to the US. Um, yes, it's going to hinder in terms of their, their innovation. But I do believe that when, when you're scared, uh, it's a very good sign for other people on the sidelines because now it's the war between US and China, right? They're fighting with each other. So we are, we are neither in neither camps. We don't uh, outrightly or explicitly support China or US. In Singapore's stance, we are friends to both. But when from a third party's view, when you look at it, uh, you're clearly scared of something. That's why you implement a ban. If you're not scared of something, 
you can just allow them to, to, to do whatever they want because you know you're in front of them. That's why you don't have to outright uh, impose restrictions of uh, trade exports or whatever nonsense. Lah. So when you, when you outright do it, um, it does mean that from the advisor's perspective, from the US, um, let's just try to slow down their growth a little bit. I think they're, they're onto something, but I don't know what they're onto, but let's just stop them from innovating and stop them from going through the developments. So to, to me, I, I feel like it screams a lot of vulnerabilities and weakness from one side to the other party. Uh, uh, in terms of implementations of many of this technology, uh, I only can see in what Tencent and Alibaba is doing in terms of VR, AR, in terms of shopping experience. That's all I can see. But at the back end on what China as a government is doing in terms of military, whatever, I don't know. I, I don't think they want to make let the world know what they're doing as well. So that's why... Um, in, in, in the grander scheme of things in Chinese economy, they like to keep a lot of things under, under the wraps. They don't want to tell people what they're doing. They just put their head down, continue working, continue improving. Um, the economy numbers, people are speculating that it's fake. Um, I, I don't know, but uh, it does seem like if you compare on a decade-long time frame, 10 years, 10 years, 10 years, 2000 to 2010, 2010 to 2020, you see leaps improvement. We can come back and revisit the discussion in 2030 and we can compare in 2020, 2020 in 10 years' time, is there leaps in improvement or not? But when I compare it to Singapore's perspective in how we shop, how we how we go through our lifestyle, our entertainment and stuff, I think that we are very, very behind in what China is doing today. So this is just one, just one data point of the many that you see. Hey, why, why they can progress so heavily or why they can uh, uh, go through so much improvement and advancement? While us, supposedly, we have higher GDP per capita, but we are not engaging in this kind of innovation. So it's just a focus in different things. But the question is more like, if they are so good, right, uh, say uh, Tencent and, and Alibaba, they are so good and all this, they, are, they have so, so much all this technology that they can roll out, right? One, why haven't they uh, like over, overtake the world? You know, there are some, some products, some services, uh, you have some core technologies that are seriously good, right? Usually it's very fast one because uh, as you're able to uh, uh, capture the, the IP and you can just roll out across uh, different countries, right? Um, I name one example. You, you see, uh, in the early phase of we uh, starting to use like all these uh, apps to, to do chat, right? Uh, WhatsApp, right? It, it just started out in US and very fast, really. It overtakes the world, right? So if you have a good technology and especially if that technology cannot be like easily copied by others, usually you can just overtake the world and, and just like set a huge margin and you can see the, the both all the revenues margins all improve. So, it, it, the value right. should accrue to the companies. Right. So uh, what we do haven't you think seen Bytance that with, with all these two companies. Eh? Yeah. So what do you think Bytance is? I mean, we, we, we don't talk about the two companies, right? We will talk mm. about Chinese companies in general, mm. right? So what do you think ByteDance is currently doing? Uh, no, taking I, over the world, I, right? I, I, because if we keep running away from the topics, because just now you said, okay, Alibaba, they are very good at their technology, their okay. warehouse is so good, all these things. No. Right? Why haven't those technology been rolled out to uh, as many countries as possible and let them capture the efficiency? Imagine that you are an e-commerce business, other people mm. also do e-commerce, and you have all this technology that others don't have. So by right, right, you can serve the same customers, serve it cheaply than others and yet get the okay. same same profits, so, right? Yeah. Wait, uh, so before that, there is two two discussions here. Uh. Yeah. So first things first, do you agree that Chinese companies in general, uh, bite dance included? Yes, yes, it's included. It's, it's just that we, I'm following your examples on Alibaba. That's why we come okay. comes from there. That why so, are these technology is there, but it hasn't been bring okay. So if I extrapolate, if I extrapolate what's happening to bite dance today in the world stage, okay, if I extrapolate what they're doing now. Let's say now I take over the US and all, I have a billion users, monthly active users, and then they start banning me. Oh, you can't use it. You can't use this. You can't use that. Uh, people don't care about software or it's a spyware. Huawei cannot use. I ban everything. What's the point of expanding? I expand finish already. I burn so much money. I capture user acquisition and then boom, uh, my market is deemed uninvestable because nobody can use. I mean, Huawei is also another one. So all these are Chinese companies, by the way. I, I branch them under the umbrella first. So let's not talk about Alibaba and Tencent. Let's talk about Chinese companies in general. When they expand overseas, um, everybody's going to... Uh, uh, it's a real concern as well. So how is Ben? Um, I think even in Singapore's case, I, I do see some people commenting, oh, I'm scared of buying Huawei phone because I think the Chinese government is spying on me. It, it's, it's, it's a very interesting phenomenon where uh, we do agree that China's in their own ecosystem. Everybody's reliant on WeChat. Everybody's reliant on, on Taobao and whatever. Even... even Elon Musk, he's talking about how good WeChat is as a system. 
Um, yeah, at the same time, Meta didn't care. Meta had WhatsApp, Meta had Instagram, but they didn't care about them. They needed to be threatened by TikTok, which expanded overseas or attempted to expand overseas. And then, then they start this kind of uh, enhancing their AI discovery engine, start short form video. And then when the US government backed them, oh, I'm going to ban TikTok, summon them to Congress, do all this kind of BS. And the entire company is demoot. Uh, I mean, that was my initial investment thesis for F Facebook specifically, because I know that they're going to screw ByteDance and ByteDance is not going to, not going to accrue much interest or much value to shareholders. So when we look at many of these uh, companies that actually manage to hit or penetrate into the rest of the world, ByteDance, Huawei, China Telecom, want to build 5G network, whatever it is, all of them are, are shot dead outside once they step out of China. So what's the point? <laughs> Uh, the question is, questions that uh, come back, uh, I know uh, companies like Huawei, definitely when it comes to technology, they are good, no doubt in that. And I do uh, believe, I do see that uh, US is trying to block them when, when their technology is like almost or, or even already surpassing US. I do agree on that. But come back to Tencent, come back to Alibaba, right? I don't recall the last time US just banned Alibaba from expanding in Southeast Asia because it threatened uh, US uh, uh, power or they, they are banning uh, WeChat in in uh in US, even I, I believe even if you are in US now, you can use WeChat, right? So there's yeah. no ban on all these uh tools or an, a, any service and product that I think is provi provided by these two companies. It, it becomes a strategic yeah. focus from the business perspective on whether they want to expand to US or whatever Southeast Asia. Um, I do agree that there are a lot of uh because now you are picking individual companies, which is Baba and Tencent, which I have no, no, no. I pick you pick one. <laughs> uh, I mean, you say, I, you say I was, e -commerce I was sharing, are good. Right. My my I question was, is. My question is, having technology alone is not enough. You need to have the technology and able to use the technology to gain more revenues, more profits. Then the companies, the, the investor will gain. But the yes. question is, for the example that we have given, right? How come we haven't seen that happening? Yeah. Uh, haven't seen that happening in a way where Tencent, I think, was 30,000 from, from, from starting of IPO, right? It accrued to shareholder, right? It IPO in 2000. It was 30,000 returns. If you started an IPO, so is it not a then, then every every I, a companies listed uh started up from zero, right? So everyone have infinity, right? So you cannot cannot give no no. Like this. It's more like it's giving specific uh technologies that invented. Okay, you can we can bring on Amazon from AWS. They bring on AWS. What is the difference? Okay. They accrue the the values to the shareholders, right? Then comes to like okay, wait, like Alibaba, I, I think it's different. Tencent. Wait, what I are the we... new technology? Let me finish. What is what are the new technologies and how could that technology actually bring in profit and margin? My my question is very simple. Yeah. Okay, we are bouncing here and there because there is a lot of discussion points or sub-discussion points in this entire discussion, right? So first things first, um, do you acknowledge that Chinese companies in general are largely innovative to the point where US now, because it's in a trade war and there's rising tension, um, they are all out trying to block in many of these companies' innovation. I do agree that there's specific pockets. For example, like Huawei, I agree. TikTok, yes, but not every com company. Okay. Not everything they block, you know? Okay, uh. correct. So, so this is the first part. Uh, we agree that there is leaps and bounds in terms of technology advancement. Secondly, we go, now we are rotating back to Tencent and Baba, right? So for Tencent and Baba specifically, because now you're attacking the thesis on individual companies. But uh, when I circle back to what Chamaf is saying, he's not. He's attacking the whole Chinese economy and everything in China. So that's why I, I keep trying to address the China issue. Um, but I use Baba and Tencent as an example. but And ByteDance and Huawei and China Telecom as an example. Um, but if you want to go into company-specific analysis, we can go into it. But then can we circle, can we finish the conclusion first? Do you have a conclusion on this Chinese example that uh, are we in agreement that it's not as bad as what Chamaf is saying, or he's basically painting a different picture on the realities of what is happening in China today. I don't know the part. Eh? I, I let, let Kelvin decide on this. I really don't know like what, what are we trying to agree on with regards to Chinese economy. Uh, just just agreeing the disagreeing the pointers uh, given by Chamath. I also don't, don't don't have much opinions. I'm more like asking questions, you know. It's more not okay. like I, I want to bring out the points and shoot the points, you know. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I think. So, because the discussion evolved into a very, very different level, because now we are talking about Alibaba and Tencent thesis, right? Because I use them as example. Yeah. But then when I use ByteDance and, and, and Huawei and China Telecom as an example, then are you going to attack the thesis on them as well? Thesis on what? Okay. So, <laughs> we, we very simple. Huh? We started off with Chama's tweet, right? So, Chama paint a very bad picture. 
China unemployment, China economy is bad, property crisis, um, whatever, lah, all the list of things that, that he's saying. And then that's why he concluded that China is uninvestable. Okay, that, that is the conclusion. So we, we then after that, we jump over and then you say that uh, Chinese companies can't accrue shareholder interest or there is no accrual because of a new technology. You want me to name examples of why this technology is able to generate profits, generate returns and ability to scale. Um, I, I give you a few examples and then you question um, that they are unable to penetrate or they are unable to scale or unable to get profits, right? That was the second part of the discussion. Yeah, yeah. Then after it turned out, if you're asking those questions, basically you are just questioning the thesis on Baba and Tencent. Ma. Not really. It's not about the companies. It's more like uh, there are so many good things about China. Their technology okay. is good. All everything is good. Face scanning is good. Every, their technology is better than US. How come we haven't seen them overtake the world? That's my question. There's competition. Nah. <laughs> and if they are much better, then of course I think a uh, customer would choose them, right? Like, like why haven't actually not really? Over you, them? you have, you have yeah. to see this. This is another politic thing again. Like you know, when when Weibo came out to US, uh, no one realized. Not many people realized that Weibo is a China company. So people started using them. Then when Weibo go into US, right? <laughs> people know that this is a China company. Then you see the comments whenever someone is sponsoring, being sponsored by Weibo, they say, eh, this is a China company. It's not. It's not trustable." Even, even for Singapore, it's, it's the same. There are some people who say, oh, this China company can trust or not. So uh, so it's good, lah, but so the company is good, but you, the people, if they don't trust the company, because if, if it's from China, then it, there's no way they can go in safely with him. Yeah, it's an, it's an impression thing, which is what I wanted to say. And the outright explicit blocking from the US government on many of these successful companies. And then to circle back to the question on you saying, how does shareholder get interest or how is it what i do believe that many of these tech giants now with their huge amount of war chests right basically they're playing the warren buffett game tencent has been in that warren buffett game for a very long time your tesla your c limited your whatever they have been a crazy capital allocator i think more than half of their market cap today is in the entire portfolio baba might be going into the capital allocator game as well since you don't want chinese companies we're going to invest in your u.s companies so unless now you're going to tell me that you're going to restrict capital, Chinese companies, Chinese money can't buy US companies, then I, I, I look forward to that kind of capitalism society or system that you're going to create. So, so that's the general trend. But I'm just saying that despite even having superior technology or capabilities, um, like TikTok, like Huawei, it doesn't matter. And But I'm not saying that it doesn't, ma it doesn't matter to the US and to scaling to the world, but it matters in China because everybody's going to use them. I think maybe in Southeast Asia, it's also very open. Um, people or Southeast Asia companies are much more open to using even AliCloud, for example, your airlines, your, your AirAsia, your Malaysian government, your whoever, whatever government, they're much more open to establish that China relationship. So at the end of the day, they will, as long as your, your, your technology or whatever is, is, is decently good and there's improvements and there is advancement, I do believe that there is still room to harvest uh, profits and accruing to shareholder. And I think to, to, to just now, one of your arguments was saying any company, the IPO, as long as it goes up, then it accrues shareholders' interest. I think not really. That's a straw man kind of argument. There is a difference to like in terms of the magnitude of how much shareholders actually benefit. For many companies like great companies, Coca-Cola, Apple, yeah, they accrue a lot of shareholders. Uh, 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 interest and, and, and value. But there are also a lot of v vampire or zombie companies that didn't make much for... In fact, you're, you lost money after holding a long period of time. So I'm just saying that the capital game, at least the capital allocation game in China is not dead. Um, there are a lot of good companies that you can still invest in that still continuously generate profits by the sheer level of growth, inflation, whatever. But I, I don't see I, I don't see that as an issue, to be very, very honest. If you you can go into companies that still can have growth capacity, can still invest effectively and, and all those st good stuff. The other thing I want to add is like US, why they don't expand into US is uh, in terms of population numbers, uh, China got like 1.4 billion or US has like 300 million. It's probably easier to expand into China itself. I mean, into like other places like than into US because there's far less resistance uh, and also people who are from China who are going up the value chain or whatever, uh, they are more likely to use that thing la, compared to US people or even other, other places of the world. La. Actually, on this impression part, right, I wanted to also say, I don't know whether you guys follow the automobile business last time in the 1980s. So I think last time was still Ford, GM, who are still doing cars, right? 
And then the Japanese and Korean brands started coming up. Your, your Hyundai, your Toyota, whatever. I, I, I do believe that from what I read or from what I understand, um, it was heavily rejected by many of the US counterparts. They still think that buy America. America is the best. All this Toyota, whatever bullshit, throw away. And then look at where we have come. Toyota is the biggest in the entire world. So I, I, I'm not sure. I'm not speculating. I'm not extrapolating the same fact. But I'm just saying that there's this Chinese saying. I, I, thought, I, I, I don't know whether I don't know whether this is a accurate usage or like it's just I, 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 I if I butcher it, for, forgive me if I butcher it. I think it's called 天有不测风云，人有旦夕祸福，知祸福。Everything is unexpected. You don't look behind and then you extrapolate out and then say that, okay, this is going to happen. I'm so cocksure that this is going to happen. Um, every phase of the development, every 10, 20 years, every decade, companies come and go. Um, impressions come and go. Last time they hit China. La last time they love China. Now they hit China. A lot of tensions. Um, last time they don't like Japanese, Korean cars. Who, who knows what is going to happen? It's this whole game of life is very fun. So I'm just saying that if you remain a long-term optimist, things will work out. Countries will work out. Economies will work out on their own. And especially for bigger economies, um, um, as long as you continue the, the, the pace of innovation and people don't get complacent, I, I'm more afraid that the countries or companies get complacent. That's when they stop improving. And that's how you definitely destroy shareholders' value. So, so that's just my general take. I, I think I'll just conclude on this. I'm not going to say, this is basically like a solo talk show. I, I don't want to talk already. No, I think good. Uh. I need to ask questions to have all these uh, talking points. This, this I, I don't know. I don't know why it became a solo solo event. Um, I mean, the questions are directed at me because I'm the huge or the biggest Chinese bull here. So um, I, I do know that it's a very complicated and intricate topic. And there are a lot of things that are not just black and white. Everybody just think that, oh, US is good, China is bad. I, I don't think so. I don't think it's that easy to see the world. Um, I do have many comments or opinions on different Chinese subsectors and whatnot. Um, we can have a discussion another day. But uh, so just a disclaimer: this is gonna be a, a solo talk show where I'm gonna talk ninety percent of the time. If you're not interested, you can just click off the video. And if not, if you if you like what I have to say, then you can continue watching on. And yeah, hope you guys smash the like button. So with that, we'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. Why chicken so angry? <laughs> no, no, no. It's